96.7 FM, WORX. Hello, and thank you for tuning in. It is 9.05 a.m. here on Telegraph Hill, and it is the final Tuesday in the month of May. The final Tuesday means it's time once again for Marshall Taylor, Chief Perkins, Sheriff Wallace. Thank you guys all for coming on the program today. It's always our pleasure, AJ. Thanks for having us. Good morning. Thank you, guys. And so, as we uh, look into the... Uh, End of the month of May, uh, what's new with everybody's uh, police departments? We'll start with uh, uh, with the students and the children back out in the community. Uh, looking forward to see them during the day during patrols and interacting with them outside at their houses. So definitely uh, looking forward to uh, summer. I'm sure those kids are. <laughs> Chief Perkins. Obviously, with the uh, warmer weather and the uh, the summer summer approaching, uh, a lot of festivals, a lot of activities going on. Uh, the officers always look forward to uh, to the festivals and uh, the uh, the weekends. Um, obviously, with uh, the courthouse days, the River Fest, the regatta, you know, those types of things all coming up. Uh, just uh, asking folks to, to be safe out there and to, to be considerate of others. And uh, we do have the, the new station, obviously. We've been excited about that, and we're hoping tentatively to try to get a uh, get a uh, open house scheduled for sometime this week or possibly next week to go ahead and get that out of the way and get uh, get folks in there and get them uh, get them a chance to see the new uh, the new location we're in. Uh, again, excited and happy to to be in there. Um, also, uh, got three graduating from the uh, from the academy uh this next or this thursday i'm sorry this thursday um we're looking forward to getting them out with uh, ftos and getting them trained and getting them out on their own uh within the next probably six to eight weeks um, of fto time then they'll be on their own so looking forward to that and getting back to more fully staffed uh once these three graduate uh, from the academy so that'll be a, a positive for the for the department and for the guys and give them a chance to to get some some time off that they probably haven't been able to take with being kind of short-staffed yeah, I work with the, well with the uh, Sheriff's Department as well. We do have a, a new recruit uh, that we brought on board. He'll be going to the Academy in uh, June, so we'll look forward to get, getting him started and, uh, and getting him back and, and on the road. Uh, it's an addition to the department, uh, which we're always appreciative of. Um, we never have too many men or women, so it um, be good to get him back, and, and we continue to grow. We continue to can, can continue to do more things you know, throughout the community as far as you know, narcotics work and uh, just community relations and those type of things. So um, we're looking forward to, again, getting him started and getting him back. Uh, Chief Taylor mentioned that you know we are heading into the summer months, uh, and then Chief per Perkins mentioned the fact that you know we as we hit the summer months we have a lot of festivals going on. So we definitely want as we head into the summer, you know, people being aware of their surroundings as they're on the roads. As you know, you see more motorcycles, see more bikes on the road. Um, but then, like Chief Perkins said, uh, making good decisions as you go out to uh, celebrate the festivities here locally. Yeah, the <laughs> same for the graduation between Madison, Shaw, and Southwestern. Uh, there'll be a lot of graduation celebrations for the kids graduating and getting ready to go off for college in the fall, so there may be opportunities that they're having going away parties. Uh, we just ask that the parents be responsible and supervise their children to ensure that they're making uh, good life decisions because tragically we don't want to have any more losses uh, to the community. Along those same lines, uh, we did have a, a tragic uh, incident that took place at uh, approximately 3.30 Sunday morning on uh, on what we call New Hill Road or Highway 421. Uh, would have been south of the roundabout uh, where a bicyclist was struck and uh, and ultimately died from the uh, from the blow. Um, I encourage everybody, you know, to always stay vigilant. You, you never know as we go along the lines of, of talking about motorcyclists and bicycles. You, you never know where they're going to be or what time they're going to be at. So uh, we always ask that you stay, uh, stay vigilant. And I would ask if uh, anybody by chance would have uh, been through that area or seen anything get out of bed 3.30 a.m. On, on Sunday morning to uh, contact the Sheriff's Department and let us know. Uh, we do have the uh, victim identified, and, and we do have a suspect in custody. But, uh, you know, if anybody did, you know, see something, that would certainly be appreciative if they would come forward and let us know. So that uh, plays into what we talk about a lot of the times. So, you know, the, the public is your eyes and ears out there. Yeah, absolutely. And even if you think it's a, uh, a small or minimal amount of information you may have, whether it be in this situation or any, uh, please let us know that uh, that could very well be the key to what we need to uh, to resolve some issues. So uh, the public's always been very good to us here in, in Madison and Hanover and Jefferson County, and, and we appreciate that. And we continue to ask them to uh, come forward and uh, you know give us uh, information. They are like you said, they are our eyes and our ears. 
bicycle safety in particular and yeah you know, i know you, you hear about it more often with motorcycles i think than you do regular bicycles but it is you know look twice save a life right yeah absolutely and like i said bicycles uh, you know are an issue but uh, also our motor scooters uh, we've had some unfortunate tragic accidents with uh, with uh, the mopeds and motor scooters they just uh, travel a little bit slower especially going uphill and it's easy to uh, gain speed on them and come up on them quickly so um, yeah, just uh, stay alert and stay vigilant Obviously, it's something we talked about for the last several months now on this show, but uh, the issues at the Jefferson County Jail and the expansion of that as well. Yeah, one thing that uh, hasn't changed is our inmate population. Unfortunately, it remains uh, pretty steady at about 140, 150. Some days we've getting up to the 160 category. And then again, when you have a jail that holds 108, that's uh, you can imagine the issues that we deal with on a daily basis. So. Having said that, uh, the commissioners, you know, have came forward and uh, we're doing a, a jail study now, research on what we need to do and where we need to go. We've contracted with a, a company called RQAW. They're uh, looking at all options, all locations, and, and all possibilities. And one thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we do it right, and we want to make sure that we build a jail for not only now but for uh, for the future. You know, and I say 20 and 30 and 40 and hopefully 50 years down the road where it can be expanded upon and, and not necessarily landlocked should we need to uh, to do that. So we're in that process. I uh, always encourage any uh, citizens, if you have any ideas or thoughts, to you know, share them with us. We'll, uh, we'll let you know when our next uh, jail committee meeting is going to be. Uh, those are open to the public, and uh, we appreciate any input. So it's a, uh, it can't happen fast enough, but we can't rush it either. So it's a, it's a slow, arduous task, but, uh, but we're moving forward. You know, the facility like that, like you said, it's a, you have to do it right, so you've got to take your time. <laughs> yeah, and, they, and the facilities have changed. Uh, you know, they're built in, in pods and in sections now, so if you, you know, say you put in three, four pods and you need to expand in the future to add more inmates, you just essentially can bring in another pod as long as you have the land and location to do so. So, you know, that's that's things we're keeping in mind is, you know, what's, what's it look like now and where we're going to be in the future, and if we need future growth, can we do that at the location which we're, we're looking at or wanting to go to? So um, all that be taken in consideration, and like I said, hopefully we'll have a, a facility that will last this community for uh, well past my lifetime anyway. Yeah. Now, I know that you've been involved with law enforcement for quite a while. You've been the sheriff you know, for the last eight years. Just in the eight years you've been sheriff, um, there's been quite a bit of change at the jail just in that. Yeah, there has. When I took over as a sheriff, we uh, averaged about 70, 75 inmates on a daily basis, and uh, and it's essentially doubled. So we're, you know, 140, 150 constantly now. Um, one of the other big issues is our female population. It's uh, probably tripled since uh, since I've taken over as sheriff. So we went in the jail wasn't set up for that, wasn't prepared for that. So, uh, you know. Uh, my hats again off to my staff. They just do an amazing job down there. They uh, they do a job that uh, that probably most of us couldn't do, and I I'm very appreciative of them. But uh, we got uh, we got help on the way for them. Like I said, a new facility. Uh, you know the way they lay them out now, uh, the equipment that's put into them will go a long way and and make a new job much much easier and much safer for not only them but for the inmates as well. And Chief Taylor, obviously the the jail falls under the. <laughs> the jail falls under the sheriff's jurisdiction, but this is something that impacts um, you know, your department as well as Chief Perkins department. Yes, it does. Um, because as they're building it, it takes into account how long or the travel distance or time right now it's a convenient location. Uh, but as far as the jail search uh, committee, when they're putting it together and doing their uh, expiration of different options they'll take into consideration the downtime or the travel time because really it works out great for uh, Madison PD where it's at downtown because they're able to just come within their city Hanover we have a short eight minute drive but say if we had to go to the eastern part of the county it could be very long vice versa uh, for Madison to have to leave the town limits to go out to an outreaching area of that of uh, diminished patrol or uh, protection at that given time so those are different things but where it's at right now the jail's landlocked in itself that they can't expand or have other things so uh, really the search committee has a lot of tasks to look at what's financially and fiscally land what do they have available then also the convenience for uh, the transport and also the proximity to courts for those individuals to make um, their initial appearances or go to hearings. Um, the sheriff's office, the sheriff, uh, they have a lot of duties that just come right from the jail um, and that's one of the big, I wouldn't say headache, but one of the big responsibilities that can go and uh, take a lot of time just to make sure it's all worked out. 
Chief Perkins, anything to add to that? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, there's a definite factors with uh, location. Um, if an officer does have a, a, a subject who's unruly, who's out of control, who's uh, fighting, not wanting to obviously go to jail, and the location is not ideal or not within a within a easily traveled, then that can really affect you know the officer's ability to get the person to the facility, get them inside the facility, and get them. Uh, locked up where they need to be, where they can be uh, not able to hurt themselves and hurt others. So definitely uh, they do have a, a daunting task ahead of them and, and getting it, but it is definitely much needed for our community, for our county, and for the, the city Hanover and the Sheriff's Department as well. Big thanks to these two gentlemen their departments uh, for what they do to help us out at the jail. Um, you know, quite often we'll call upon them to assist us with, uh, you know, some unruly inmates or some some movement within the facility and they're always right there to to help us out so um so we appreciate these guys very much and their departments for always being willing to to jump in and do that no definitely um yeah we we have three different departments of law enforcement represented here but you know separate separate uniforms but certainly working towards the same goals yeah absolutely yeah we're really uh, really pleased with the uh, unification that we have but within the departments in this community now it's um, i'm sure it's been i know it's been good in the past but uh, i can't remember it uh, really being any much better than than what it is right now um and it, it also includes the indiana state police uh, we work uh, hand in hand with the uh, with everyone to make sure that the job gets done at the end of the day uh, we protect our citizens and, and our officers go home safe our summer is here now it just came all at once right we went from uh, winter right into summer it seems like and uh, and uh, with summer brings a lot more outdoor activities so we just want to encourage everybody to practice their safety measures when they're out and about and we're blessed here in our community with a uh, with a beautiful river and riverfront and a lot of water uh, to uh, to enjoy but uh, you know please be safe and, and always practice your uh, safety measures when you're out on the water we uh, want everybody to have a good summer a safe summer but uh, you know we don't want any uh, don't want any accidents so just uh, please be safe out there. Right. Chief Taylor, we talked about beginning the program, you know, graduation is this week, want everybody to be safe, but as graduation comes, that means that the kids are out of school, and that means the kids will be out, about, out and about as well. Yes. Uh, with the uh, students, children, school-age children out, that means that they may be playing in the neighborhood, the town parks, riding their bikes. Uh, just keep your eyes out uh, when you're driving through residential neighborhoods. Make sure that somebody's not coming out of a driveway or out of a yard chasing those balls. I mean, we haven't had any accidents in Hanover for about a year and a half where any children weren't involved involved in a vehicle versus child accident, but uh, it could happen at any given time, and uh, the officers and deputies from the Sheriff's Department, nobody wants to work an uh, involvement or a wreck or anything involving children, because those are the ones that really uh, pull on the heartstrings and everything and could potentially go and bother uh, everybody that's involved. So we'll be heading to summer. We definitely want everybody to have a great summer, but have a safe summer. You're absolutely right, and I'll conclude by just encouraging everybody to also be vigilant and and uh, report uh, what you believe to be impaired, uh, intoxicated drivers. Uh, don't hesitate to make that call. Um, you know, quite often uh, the community is doing a good job with that, but uh, just encourage uh, you know to uh, stay vigilant and, and call us if you believe a driver in your area or somebody you see is impaired, so we can get them off the roadway. And uh, one other thing involving law enforcement uh, that is yep in process right now is uh the click it or ticket campaign as well so yep absolutely stay buckled up um uh, you know our cars now remind us with that co consistently dinging bell to to put the seat belt on and uh and that's there for a reason that uh, they certainly do save lives i mean i've seen it over m my many years of law enforcement uh you know somebody would have would have died had they not had the belt on and some people people did pass away that should have had the belt on so they certainly make a difference so uh i think we're to the point uh, now with uh, with all the campaigns we've had going on that people do do an outstanding job of it but uh, but we are out there to remind you to uh, to keep that on and uh, you know tickets are being issued if you're not as we again coming up on the end of the program sheriff wallace anything else you'd like to add before we go I think I just covered you just summer safety and uh, like to go out and enjoy yourself and uh, and be safe. Have a great summer. Chief Perkins. Uh, same thing. If you see something, say something. I think the, the sheriff said it well. Um, uh, pay attention. Be vigilant. Uh, be safe and uh, look out for everyone else. <laughs> and Chief Taylor. Uh, another gentleman covered it and everything. I'd just like to say thank you for tuning in, listening to us on Cop Talk. And that's all, folks. <laughs> Excellent way to end the program. That is Hanover Town Marshal Josh Taylor, Madison Police Chief Jeremy Perkins, and Jefferson County Sheriff John Wallace. Join us once again for Cop Talk, this program we do the last Tuesday of each month. They'll be back in the studio with us again the last Tuesday in the month of June.